Hi everyone, my name is Shawin Fitzpakorn and I'm a rising sophomore at Duke. Today I'll be presenting on Pradhan Mantri Janarogya Yojana, or PMJ for short. I want to thank my mentors, Wenhui and Ipchida, as well as Gavin and the rest of the team at the Center for Policy Impact and Global Health. This work really would not have been possible without your support. So first, just starting off with some brief context on India, it's classified as a lower middle income country and it has the second highest population in the world. For the past few decades, India has been facing both urban and epidemiological transitions. The poverty rate is the highest among South Asian countries. And finally, the government health expenditure has historically been low. Service delivery differs a little bit between rural and urban areas, but they generally follow this three tiered pyramid. So in 2008, India took one of its first major steps toward universal health coverage, or UHC, through the form of RSVY. And although this initiative did provide an annual cover to below poverty line families, it failed to effectively address financial risk protection. So in 2018, the government unveiled Rishman Brat, which has two arms. First, the transitioning of current health infrastructure to health and wellness centers, and secondly, PMJ. So this summer, my project looked at evaluating the progress and gaps of PMJ, specifically according to the three dimensions of UHC. So first, who is covered? Secondly, which services are covered? And finally, has it provided the necessary financial risk protection? In terms of methods, I started off with a broad search of academic journals and gray literature. I then extracted and analyzed data from the PMJ government website. And finally, I conducted my narrative review. So we're nearing the two year anniversary of PMJ, congratulations. <laughs> and so I just wanted to point out two significant milestones. First, in October of 2018, the scaling up of PMJ to 32 of 36 states and union territories. And secondly, in December of 2019, the revision of health benefit packages from version 1.0 to 2.0. PMJ aims to cover the bottom 40% of India's population. So this is equivalent to over 500 million people. And it does so by providing a, an annual package of 500,000 rupees per family. The scheme is fully funded by the government with cost sharing between the center and the state and eligibility is awarded based off of the socioeconomic caste census of 2011. So PMJ beneficiaries can avail services completely free of charge, but only at impaneled hospitals. And PMJ itself offers over 1,350 health packages, but it's really important to note that this excludes all outpatient services. So some key challenges our team has identified thus far, eligibility criteria may not be the most inclusive and it leaves some of the target population behind. So there are certain mismatches between states with high poverty headcounts but low eligibility. Secondly, there's less identification and disproportionately less service utilization in districts and states that are not as financially equipped to be operating PMJ. And although there is a high volume of high value claims under PMJ, which would suggest the scheme providing some form of financial stability to households, one study in Chattisgarh found that there's no reduction in out of pocket or catastrophic expenditures. This graph really just serves to reiterate how varied utilization is across the states, and this can be symptomatic of deeper issues. For example, poor states um, usually have lower purchasing power and thus would kind of ward off private, se uh, private sector development, sorry. So what implications does our work have on policymaking and PMJ specifically? Um, we would recommend that India impanel more of its public sector, as well as engage more at the community level, really getting the word out to potential beneficiaries. We'd also suggest extending coverage to outpatient services, which make up the majority share of India's out-of-pocket expenditures, as well as establishing standards and regulations across the whole nation. Right now, a lot of freedom is afforded to states in terms of, of implementation, and so we really want to standardize things more. And lastly, build capacity for health technology assessment, which has shown a lot of promise in other countries and their journeys toward universal coverage. 
In terms of next steps, I will be conducting a cross-cutting study with Thailand's universal coverage scheme. And this is because Thailand, at the time of rolling out its universal coverage, was also a lower middle income country. And lastly, this work is part of, part of broader study by our Center on PMJ Performance in Uttar Pradesh. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Um, thank you. Hey, Jillian, I have a question. Well, then, yeah. Yeah, uh, Susan. The yeah. Sean, very interesting presentation. Yeah. Can you explain this huge number of different packages? I think you said 1,350. Is that, are those all devised differently by the states? Do people have a choice? What, what explains all of that? Yeah, of course, that's a great question. So with the health benefit packages, they do vary by state. So basically the central government will kind of set these guidelines on packages and the number of packages, but it's up to the state um, on which ones they wanna implement. So actually they have guidelines on adding certain packages that are state specific. And so the number can be very different um, across the states. 